this video, we're going to discuss the basics of Jeru. Here we see Jeru running. In order to get it running from a PC, you can click on this little shortcut that I have installed on the desktop. Alternatively, you can start Jeru the same way you start any program on your PC, by clicking on the bottom left corner and typing Jeru and then clicking on it, and that will start Jeru running. Looking at Jeru, we see that the screen ha is divided into several compartments, and we're going to spend a little bit of time now discussing each one. The large white pane that you see on the left is where the source code is going to go for the code that you're going to write for Jeru. There are two tabs for this source code, one the main method tab, and the other is the Jeru methods tab. The little smiley face tells you whichever tab is currently active. In the first six beginning activities for Jeru, we will only be using the main method tab. Down here where it says current language style, there are three possibilities to pick from. In our course, we're going to be using Java formatted Jeru, so you want to leave it enabled on this first option here, which is the Java option. Down here, there's an information panel that's going to report any errors you get from the compiler. The island is surrounded by water, which is shown in blue and on the island it initially starts off with all green grass. The island is in a square configuration consisting of 24 squares across and 24 squares down. When you point the cursor to any square on the island you can see that the cursor location is going to be displayed right at the bottom of the island. The numbering of the squares on this island start at zero for both the row and the column. The origin is here on the top left square. As you can see, this is cursor location 00. zero. And as I make my way along the first row, you can see that the column number is changing. When I get to the top right corner, I get to location 023. The bottom right corner is 2323, and the bottom left corner is row 23, which is the 24th row, and column 0. It's going to be important to remember that both the rows and the columns start numbering at zero, and when we number any particular square, it always goes row and then the column. Over here, we're going to have information displayed about our Jeru's. Let's talk a little bit about some of these tabs that are up here on the top part of the screen. Here are the tabs that are used to save the source code. That's going to be important. The first time you go to save it, it's going to ask you for the name of a file. So I could do call this file project one. And you'll notice that the source code has these .jsc suffixes, which are automatically appended, and the .jsc suffix stands for Jeru source code. In comparison, if you ever want to load an island file, you would do that on this side here by clicking on island file open, and then going to the beginning activity. And now let's say we wanted to load the lake island view. So I would click on that, and you can see that all the islands have a .jev suffix, which stands for Jeru Environment. If I click on that, you'll see that the island related to this project now loads. You can make modifications to this island manually by using these keys here. Clicking on here allows you to add more flowers. If you want to delete any flowers, simply hit the right mouse click on the island where you want the flower to disappear. These red uh, polka dots here indicate nets that can be placed on the island to try to trap the Jerus. On the blue, you can add additional lakes or water reservoir traps. And this final button over here lets you clear the island completely back to an all green structure. The question mark over here allows you to get the manual for the Jeru to load. Here, you can click on the various tabs to explore all the different methods that are already built in to help you manipulate your Jerus. We'll have much more to say about these methods in a later video. Let's look over here at these tabs, which look remarkably similar to the first set. The island files for Jeru are maintained completely separately from the source code, so if you wanted to save your source, you would press this Save button over here. In comparison, if you make changes to the island and want to save them, you would press this Save button over here. If you want to exit Jeru, you exit through this exit door over here. These buttons here allow you to run your program. The button on the left lets you rewind to the first line. This allows you to step a single step in your code, and this lets you run the program all at once. If you do choose to run the program all at once, this slide bar over here determines the speed of the run, with one being the slowest and six being the fastest. 
And now let's finish this tutorial by looking at an actual Drew program in action. Here I've created an island with some flowers on it. Here I've added some code. We would typically start by saving our code, rewinding, and then stepping. You can see down here the program is going to be telling us exactly what's going on. If there were any error messages, they would show up here now. I can keep stepping the program forward. You can see here that the Drew has been created, and now we're going through the process of stepping through the code. The code that's about to run next has been highlighted here in purple. If I want to run the code at full speed, I can switch over to this fast forward, and you can now see that the Drew has started to move. I can pause the program by pressing the pause button, or I can stop it altogether by hitting the red button.